All right, so we're going to um, review the factors that affect reaction rates, uh, the gizmo and the uh, lab activity that we did. Uh, and then we're going to talk about chemical equilibrium and do some calculations. First thing we're going to talk about is those factors, um, concentration, using a catalyst, I'll talk about inhibitor also, um, particle size or surface area, and then temperature. As you found in the um, lab activity and on the gizmo, if you increase your concentration of your reactants, then you're going to have a faster reaction rate because you have more collisions going on. So if you decrease it, it's going to take a longer time. Um, with a catalyst, a catalyst speeds up a reaction. So that speeds up a reaction, and we'll talk about how in just one moment. So if a catalyst speeds it up, an inhibitor is going to slow it down. Now a lot of y'all said if you added more catalysts, it would speed up. No, it's just adding a catalyst, period, not how much you add of it. Um, the more surface area you have, then you're going to have more, um, it's going to increase your um, reaction time because you've got more particles exposed to the reaction, so you can have a reaction um, going. In with the temperature, if you increase your temperature, it's going to go faster because you are increasing the speed of those molecules, and that, so they um, collide more often. And if you decrease it, obviously, it's going to uh, go slower. So here are my um, graphs from the gizmo. Here you can see that I decreased my concentration, so it took a little bit longer for the reactions to really occur, start occurring. Um, and you can see that it's still going at seven minutes. Here I added a catalyst, and so the reaction went much faster than um, before. Let's go back one slide. This is my where everything was the regular um, settings. So you can see that the catalyst um, caused it to react a lot faster. Um, here I decreased the temperature, so you can see that it's taking a lot longer. If I had increased it, then um, obviously it would have gone faster. And then surface area, this is where I decreased, I minimized my surface area, so you can see that the reaction is taking much longer. This is an energy diagram. Um, it shows the energy involved in a reaction. Um, your energy of activation, your E sub A, is how much energy it takes for the reaction to occur, to get past this little point. And this is where you have your activated complex. So I'm getting used to the new writing thingy that they gave us. Um, what, an, what a catalyst does is it lowers that activation energy, how much energy is required. That's why the reactions occur faster. So here you can see where we have a lower hump, so to speak, to get over when we have a catalyst. If we had an inhibitor, then it would take much longer because an inhibitor increases that rate of reaction. Um, common inhibitor that I use, and you may also, is if you put lemon on cut apples, then it slows down the browning pot process because it inhibits the um, reaction rate, meaning you, it increases how much energy is required for a reaction to occur. Okay, we're also going to talk about chemical equilibrium. Um, an equilibrium expression is your products of your reactants, and they are raised to whatever coefficient. So the little numbers here, or the little letters, I should say, are your generic coefficients, and then the big letters are your generic reactants and your products. Your reactants are always listed first. Products are always listed second. This back and forth here means that the reaction can go in the reverse react. You can force it, and we'll talk about that later on, um, to go back and form more uh, reactants or products. It's just very few reactions always go just to completion. They, there's always a back and forth with your molecules. So you can see that I set it up where my K equals my products raised to their little coefficients over my reactants. One thing to keep in mind is that if you have a liquid or a solid, they are not included. They have nothing to do with our equilibrium. Aqueous solutions do. Um, so there's a big difference between a, a natural liquid and something dissolved in water. Okay, so our first example, we're going to write, um, we've got our nitrogen plus our hydrogen goes to ammonia. And so this, these are my products, or that is my product, and these are my reactants. Um, they're all gases, so they're all going to be part of the equation. 
And so this is what it ends up being. Your KQ equals your, your ammonia squared over nitrogen times hydrogen cubed. Remembering that I'm getting the numbers there from the um, coefficients. Next example is we have solid sodium bicarbonate breaking down to sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. These things are solids, so they're not going to be included. So only these two products are going to be included in the equation. And so we get our KEQ equals CO2 times H2O. Since they have no coefficients, they're raised to the one power. And um, they're over one because we have nothing on the other side. Well, we can take that same type of equation and do calculations. So in order to solve that, first thing you'd have to do is do your products of your reactants. And we did that on the previous um, area. And then look at our numbers. We see that ammonia is 0.1. Our hydrogen has a value of 0.15. And our nitrogen is 0.25. So I'm going to plug it into the reaction, into the formula that we did earlier. So we had the ammonia over the nitrogen times the hydrogen, plugging in the numbers, and you get 11.85. There are no units for Ks. So you will have negative numbers there. And that's equilibrium and rates of reaction.